You know what I don't understand? And I know this about to sound real mean. And I'm going to just tell you, you know, and I'm speaking from the heart, right? And I know this about to sound real messed up, okay? But these are my honest to God feelings. I don't usually say it out loud. I don't usually say it in a room full of people. But so me and my good Judy was having a conversation, right? So she was telling me how she was like, you know, because I told y'all her kids, one of her children is by a Mexican and the other child is by a white man. She hasn't had any, none of her children are by a black man, right? So I'm just heads up. If you one of those people that, you know, you real sensitive when it comes to like the colorism topic and you one of those people that feel like all black women have to, you know, procreate with a black man, click off. Because what I'm about to say, you're not going to like. So just spare your feelings because I'm not going to, you know, this is why I say the older I get, the more I feel like, you know, I'm destined to be an entrepreneur. Because the stuff that you have to go through in these companies and the way people treat you. And it's just, I don't know. And it's sometimes I just want to tell people something and I just can't do it. And I'm just not good at being phony, right? So let me just let me just get to the point, right? So the other day, I told y'all I work in HR, right? So I was escorting one of the new hires into the room, right? To meet the D-O-N, the A-D-O-N, you know etc right so he could meet the team and get you know acclimated so you know who people were and even if you don't remember everybody's names i don't expect you to remember everybody's name right nonetheless so he was coming in and um he was so busy looking at some of the other girls i was trying to you know go around the table and you know call people name in their position because he needs to know these things, you know. So, um, he made a remark. He's a smart ass, right? Black guy, just saying. He made a remark under his breath. And I was standing in the threshold of the door. He was off to my right. And he was like, um, bitch, move. I want to see the red bones. And I said, excuse me? And he was he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was singing the song out loud in my head. Right? But I could have been a prick and got him for using profanity. You know, and I could have I could have did that. But, you know, one thing I've noticed about black men, when y'all do stuff out of line, it's like you don't want to be held accountable. You want people to turn a blind eye. And then when people hold you accountable, the first thing you say um they just being hard on me because i'm a black man don't nobody want to see the black man win but the older i get i get it's like i get further and further out with y'all so i want to say a couple of days ago he was on a night shift because he works the night shift and he made a remark like um because somebody had you know by me being hr they brought it back to me he made a remark and said um damn ain't no red bones on the night shift you know what I'm saying? So I knew the girl won't lie because when I was standing in the threshold of the door, you know, I remember that remark he said, but see, I'm trying. My boss already told me, you know, you can't be too hard on them because we already short staff. So you got to let some stuff ride. But y'all, when I tell you, I wanted to snatch that boy job so quick because first of all, you don't know what to say out your mouth. So I knew the girl won't lie when she came back and told me he made that remark. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I'm going to write him up, right? So here's the thing. But, of course, I can't make it look like I'm out to get him. But I'm, his, mouth gonna, his, my, his mouth is going to be his downfall. I, I can assure you that, right? So here's my thing. Right. First of all, I know I'm not a red bone. I know I ain't dark either. I'm right in the middle. 
So that never really, the light skin versus dark skin, I never really, I told y'all, I don't have a lot of experience in that because I'm in the middle. So I never really experienced colorism. I told you all a couple of story times, you know, I've learned, I told y'all one particular story time that I've learned not to bring up um, how I feel, like what's my type on a job. I told y'all, um, long story short, I was on a job a couple of moons ago and a dark skinned lady and I were having a conversation. We were conversing and I told her, well, she asked me, did I find TD Jakes attractive? I told her, um, no, she asked why. I said, because he's too dark. Before I knew it, I had a lot of dark skinned enemies, you know, and that taught me a lesson. Do not speak on how you feel on the job because you can offend people, right? And ever since then, that was the first and last time I ever did that shit, right? But outside of this situation and that situation on the job, the only other situation I've had was, um, I told y'all about the light-skinned best friend I had growing up, but I never, it took other people to bring to my attention that she was, um, a red bone. I, I don't pay, I don't really, you know, because the thing was, she was my friend. I didn't really pay attention too much to that. But, you know, outside of that, wait, good example. That same best friend, when I was in middle school, right? This is the big time scripper that I told y'all about, right? You'll see where I'm going with this. So, when I was in middle school, she had, she, I told y'all, she was having sex really young. She, I, that, that girl lost, her, well, um, somebody took advantage of her when she was eight. But that girl been having sex ever since. Like, that girl in middle school, she was already having sex, right? So, it was me, her, and another girl. Those two were already having sex. But me, I was still the virgin. I told y'all, I didn't lose my virginity until my early 20s. I was already in my own crib. But three of us used to run together, right? But I couldn't go nowhere. My parents didn't allow me to go nowhere versus their parents letting them go everywhere, right? So, one working at Krispy Kreme, the other one a big time stripper. Then you, and it was another girl that used to run with us, but she was a little. Her parents was a little more like us, like like my parents. So she couldn't really, me and her, we couldn't really do as much as the other girls. But she ended up finding a new crew to run with. She ended up joining the army and getting married. So it was me, the army girl, Krispy Kreme, and the stripper. Right, so we used to run together, but then it turned into uh, Krispy Kreme ended up getting. She had another best friend in another class. They used to run together, so then it would just meet down to me and the scrubber, which we were friends before we even met the other two. Right, so we went back all the way back to elementary school, but nonetheless, so by her parents used to you know let her go everywhere. She ended up having sex young, right? So, you'll see where I'm going with this. So, I tell the story all over the place. But anyway, so, the guy that she was having sex with was Krispy Kreme's brother, right? So, long story short, um, one particular time, was Krispy Kreme's older brother used to have another brother with, like, a best friend. You know how they call each other brothers, but they were best friends. I had a crush on him. But, of course, I couldn't go nowhere. My parents didn't allow me to go nowhere. So, back when they used to be at Krispy Kreme's house, all them used to be fucking in the basement. By me not being able to go, I, of course, I really served no purpose to him because I couldn't do what other people could do around my age, right? Because my parents didn't let me go nowhere, right? So, one particular time, you'll see why I brought that up. Um, we, I told you I used to fight a lot growing up. So, me and the scripper, we used to fight together. Like, if you fought, if you ran up on one of us and somebody else tried to run up, we always had a pack. If you see somebody run up, you got to handle their lightweight, right? Don't let me get jumped, right? Boom. So, one particular time, me and her, we got into it in school with two other girls, right? So, they were best friends. We were best friends, right? So, we all got sent home, right? They suspended all four of us, right? So I was telling Krispy Kreme older brother about it on the phone because 
um they get both of them got locked up her both of her brothers well both of them um we're gonna call one guy um we're gonna call him six six kids right because the stripper and six kids used to be fucking then we're gonna call the other one convict right because he been in and out of jail in and out of jail right so convict i was so back then i was so into him because i don't know what it was about this boy right so never seen him in person to this day when i by the time i got older i just was not interested in him he just was not doing nothing with his life he always would tell me you know he gonna do this he gonna turn his life around so i was attracted to what he could potentially be but when i saw he kept getting in trouble it just it just was putting me out with him because I don't like bad boys. So he will always tell me, you know, I'm going to go join the military. I'm going to go do a business. We're going to be a power couple, you know. But I kept telling him, like, but you keep getting in trouble. But I was so infatuated with the fact that he could potentially be something, right? You'll see where I'm going with this. So one particular day, he was like, oh, we was on the phone, so... Um, six kids had said, um, where Scripper at, right? Where she at? I said, well, she at home. Um, maybe, you know, she could be out. You know, when I used to get sent home, I used to be on punishment, but her mama ain't give a fuck. She might be at home. She might be in the streets. We don't know. Right. Boom. So one particular day he made a comment and you'll see how this circles back to the guy at my job. Right. So one particular day, he made a comment on the phone. He was like, what happened? So I was telling him, I was like, yeah, the bitch said something. I swung on her. Then we all got to fighting, you know, da, da, da. He was like, I don't give a fuck about you. We, I'm talking about the red bone. Uh, where she at? She good? She all right? She good? You know, I said, well, she all right? You know, yeah, I don't give a fuck about the brown skin girls. We saving the red bones, right? So, boom, let me tell y'all motherfuckers, let me tell y'all something, right? First of all, this is what I really wanted to tell that dark-skinned black motherfucker on my night job. Not on my, on my day job, right? That works the night shift. That's what the fuck I really wanted to tell you. First of all, I ain't checking for no black motherfucker crispy ass negro. If you really want to be honest, I don't want to be with y'all no damn way because I don't want no dark-skinned kids. All right, that's number one. And number two, a lot of y'all some motherfucking menaces. Okay, and half the goddamn time these white people be telling the truth about y'all. Okay, if you really want to be honest. Now, if I ever had dark skin kids, I would love my kids. But one thing Cynthia G said that was the truth, be careful procreating with these black motherfuckers. And I definitely agree. You know why y'all didn't like her? Because she said a lot of shit that a lot of us be thinking. I'm scared to get knocked up by a black man any damn way because I'm scared I might have a black son. Okay? You want me to be honest? I wanted to tell that black crispy motherfucker, I don't fuck, I ain't never fucked a dark skinned man in my life. Are you fucking kidding me? And truth be told, I'm scared of y'all. Because I told y'all a lot of the things that I have encountered with black men. I told y'all about the Chinese restaurant. I told y'all about the road rage incident. I told y'all about when I was on the bus and how them Negroes was dunking on my head. Do you really think I'm checking for a black man like talk about? And if I am, it won't be no dark, crispy motherfucker with a big ass mouth. Y'all moody as fuck. Y'all got attitudes out of this motherfucking world. Y'all don't know what to say out y'all mouth. And a lot of y'all is fucking criminals. I wanted to give that motherfucker, I wanted to tear his ear off. For real. You think I give a fuck about y'all going to get a fucking red bone? No, because a lot of y'all motherfuckers ain't no good no damn way. And y'all date below y'all caliber because y'all scared to get an alpha female that can really put y'all in y'all motherfucking place. That's why I don't be giving a fuck when the police be whooping y'all ass. I don't be giving a fuck when the judicial system be throwing a book at y'all ass. And truth be told, I'm, you know what? You want me to be honest? I'm glad when y'all go in these stores and be a dummy and don't wear a ski mask. 
and don't cover y'all face when y'all go in these stores. I'm glad because you know what? It makes it so they can catch y'all ass. Get these motherfuckers up out of here. You dumb enough to commit the crime, go to jail. I don't give a fuck if you get them white, light, bright. I don't give a fuck. Let them have you. Okay? Let them have you. And truth be told, truth, mm, I ain't even gonna say that. But, you know, mm, let me not say that. But yeah, you know, it's it's fucking ridiculous the way you think. Let me tell you something. I remember one time a guy had, um, he had, so one particular time, right? It was a guy, it was a guy that I was really interested in. He won't dog, he was about my skin complexion, right? He had a good job, usually my type, right? Something going for itself. So, he was like, um, I was interested in him. He was like, I only date Dominican women, right? I don't like dog, you know, I don't like dog. I said, I'm not dog. He said, well, you brown skin. I only date Dominican, Hispanic, Cuban women. I said, okay, fine. I ain't never been the type of woman that, like, you know, I'm going to make you like me. Why, you know? I ain't never been the type to ask a man why if he won't interest it, you know? Cool, right? So... One particular time, he ended up getting into some trouble because his job required him to travel. So, something about, you know, it was in another state. He needed people to come um, testify on his character and all this other mess. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, um, what happened to your Dominican and your Hispanic woman? That you, man, why you got to bring that up? Come on, testify for a brother. You know, I'm not doing that shit. That's why I be, that's why I be talking about with y'all like y'all put people down. Y'all try to act like the other woman are on the other pedestal more so than black woman. And then it's like y'all always come back crawling to the black woman. And this for my Jonathan Majors of the world, the young Jeezys of the world. Y'all try to always act like the Dominicans and the white women is so much better. But don't nobody go harder for y'all more than the black women. This is why I stay seated. I don't get up and march for y'all. Y'all don't know what to say out y'all fucking mouths. Y'all don't know. My cousin Thomas, every time I look up a white woman with a black man, let her have him. Let her have his ass. The fuck? Let her have him. People have a right to go for what they want to go for, but don't sit around like, you know, and try to be nasty and try to be funny. I, look, let me tell y'all something. I remember one time I was talking to a black guy, right? And he was, um, he was a black guy, right? He had a weird shaped head and, you know, I was just looking at his family and I was looking at my, my features, right? And I ain't gonna lie, the first thing I said in my, my, my mind, I'm like, our kids gonna be dark and bushy eyebrows and you know i and you know i'm gonna just be honest <laughs> i wanted so <some> my kids <laughs> i know this is about to sound fucked up but i wanted so even if my kids are not brains i want them to at least be able to depend on their aesthetic there i said it you know what i'm saying like do y'all <laughs> <laughs> and the motherfucker that said he had some nappy ass dreads, dark ass lips, you know, I wanted to say Negro, please. But my position, I couldn't say that, see. I couldn't say that, but I wanted to say so bad, Negro, please. And this is yet another black guy that after, you know, he called up there, stopped by, you know, helped him get this position. And when I say help, I know I'm HR, but when I say help, meaning certain positions that they're not qualified for, you know, you can overlook some things, right? Because he's so polite, so well-mannered, you know, and you're like, okay, fine. But then when they get in there, they, they run amok. You know what I'm saying? It makes people not want to go that extra mile for folks, right? But it's just... Ugh. Y'all, the some of the stuff I want to say to my my I want to say so bad. Like I wanted to say 
You black, crispy motherfucker with black lips, nappy ass head, uneducated motherfucker. You really think I'm checking for you? If I'm going to check for somebody, I want somebody of my caliber, of my education, of my tenacity. Do you really think I want, I'm checking for the black, burnt, uneducated, ghetto motherfucker? Are you kidding me? And I saw him one time in the store with his pants sagging, talking real... Hooling fat. You think I'm checking for you, bitch? Are you fucking kidding me? Because to be honest, the last motherfucker I'm checking for is a fucking Negro. Be for real. A hooling fat Negro. Y'all, y'all, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck on you. Be for real. You really think I, you ain't got no fucking money? You ain't got no motherfucking money. If I'm a fuck, I'm fucking up, not down. Be fucking for real. And some of the shit y'all say out y'all mouth. Only the foreign, the foreigns, which y'all say, only the foreigns. Only the foreigns. I wanted to tell this bitch so bad, you ain't no fucking Sonny Corinthos. You think I'm checking for you? Be for real. Be for real. Like, what the fuck? 